Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here today. Today I am so happy to welcome back and excited to have him back, Mr. John Barclay. Hey John. Hey Nicole, good to be back again. All right, John is here today to present some of his Topaz processing tips, some of his new tips. He's going to be sharing tips uh, mainly with adjust, detail, simplify, denoise, and, and really showing us how he works with the Topaz workflow. John is an award-winning freelance photographer and he's definitely um, an enthusiastic workshop leader. He's based out of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. His work has been published in a number of magazines and books, and he's also um, an inspirational speaker. He's been presenting his program, Dream, Believe, Create, to audiences around the country. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into your questions module on your GoToWebinar panel. I will be answering those as quickly as possible. My name is Nicole, so you'll see me just typing away there. And um, if you have any trouble with your sound or your screen, you can log off and log back in or just try minimizing and maximizing your screen if you can hear me fine. With that, I will go ahead and give this over to John. Thanks for coming today. It's always good to do these webinars for my good friends at Topaz. I love their products and like to... Uh, share some of the tips. I just got back from a wonderful trip to Cuba with a, a number of friends and so I had all these, before this trip I had all these great ideas of what I wanted to do but since all I've been doing is being immersed in my Cuba images I thought we'd use some of those and go through uh, what I have picked out about eight images from Cuba uh, that we can show a number of techniques that I tend to use in, in my Topaz workflow. So thanks again, Nicole, for inviting me. It's, it's always good to be here. I do have one shout out to a good friend, Scott Oberly, who is, who's promised to have my back. And he told me that he, any mistakes I make today that he will uh, be texting me and uh, fixing those for me. So thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started uh, with this first image here, which was right. Okay, we double click and we'll get it right in front of our hotel on the first day and what I'd like to do is kind of or what I had in mind I guess I should say and I'd like to try to do that for images as we discuss them today because some of the feedback I tend to get is why do you or how do you know what you're going to do with an image I mean that that really becomes part of the challenge I think in processing because we can throw these adjustments at things and see if they work or not and you know, I wish I had a really brilliant answer, but the answer really becomes, it's just like shooting. The more we photograph, the more we learn, and the more uh, images that we look at of other people's, the more we get an idea of what we like and what we might like to shoot. Processing is very similar. You're going to have to try things and see what you like. But I knew on this, I, because of the old cars that tend to be in Havana, I wanted to give it a little bit of an older feel. So. Let's, with that idea in mind, let's go down to whoops, Topaz Adjust. And this is where I was going to start was in the retro film collection. Now, just, just by way of refreshers here, all of the interfaces uh, with their products are the same. And on the left side, you're going to have presets. If you don't want to deal with those, you can hide that by hitting the carrot on the left side or bring that panel out. And you can go through these various collections um, that cr are beautiful presets, um, but uh, those who have been with me before understand that I like to take a preset off times and then tweak that to be something more. So let's go down to this film collection, and I really like the retro style one on, on this particular scene, giving it a little bit more of that old world feel. But because I like to play, I went over here to the right side, and on the right side of the interface we have the well, a couple things. We have the tools there to tweak this to our heart's desire, really. Um, but we also will see what the presets have done, because that's all the preset is doing. It's adjusting or, or putting these uh, adjustments over here to specific values, and you can change them as you wish. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of uh, things here. I'm going to just bring up this adaptive exposure a little bit in the regions. 
And there's a reason why I wanted to brighten it up a little bit because a tool that I didn't talk about the last time I want to go ahead and chat a little bit about today, and that's the curve tool that was added in uh, version 5, so far as just 5. And here you have a drop-down list where you can pick various um, settings, if you will. And notice this particular preset shows medium contrast. But if I go to medium contrast do two, it gives it a nice, more contrasty punch, if you will. And knowing that that was going to happen, that's why I brightened it up just a touch. Otherwise, it would have been a little bit too dark. But even with that, I'm going to pop back into the adaptive exposure. I'm going to bring the brightness down just a touch more. Not a lot. Maybe bring the contrast up with this slider just a little more. And there we go. We have a look, I think, very quickly and easily that resembles an, an old-time photo. Now, we can, we can enhance this even further by going down to the Details tab. If we, don't, if, we, if we don't like the way the detail looks, we can increase that and just bring the strength up on this, and you'll notice that the pavement in the street starts to get some detail, and the car gets a little bit more detail. So again, these are choices that we have. There's no right or wrong. It's, it's a look that you're trying to create. Beyond that, just by way of refresher, there is a, a local adjustment tool now in the Just 5. And so if we wanted to, and we can make that brush bigger or smaller with the bracket keys next to the letter P, and or bigger or smaller, and if I wanted to, you can set the Dodge tool here, or Burn. In this case, we want to Dodge to brighten it up just a touch, just to show you what it'll do. This is the strength slider for how much it's going to brighten it or darken it. And then you can set the brush size and the values of the brush down here. But just, again, by way of introduction, I can paint on this now uh, and brighten up the car just a little bit. The reason I might want to do this in this particular image is I really want this foreground gold car to be the center of interest. And so I might want to make it a tad brighter while leaving everything else in the background a little bit darker. OK, and then for this image, one other thing that's kind of fun to work with, let's close that up, is on the finishing touches, there's a transparency slider. And that's in a couple of their programs now. And what the transparency slider does for you is it allows you to blend back the effect that you've created in Adjust with the original in image, the base image. And so let's maybe the best way to show that is, is take the slide. So right now, being all the way over to zero, it's showing the entire effect that we've created in Adjust. If I slide this over to one, that's the original base image before we started. So what's nice is you can feather back in the original image to give it some uh, of its uh, how do I want to characterize this? Some of the reality that existed in that image versus maybe the stylized look that you're getting and feather that to taste. I'm not sure I'd do that with this image, but in this webinar, oftentimes what I'm trying to do is just show you choices and options so that you're aware that they exist and why and when you might use them. The last thing we might do is go to the vignette tool. And here we can click the center. I'm over here on the right side of the panel now. We can click center, or we can put the X where we want that vignette to have its center, and then we can change the strength of that. And if you want to see what's happening with any of these adjustments, go to where the checkbox is on the right side. And if I uncheck that, you'll see the vignette go away. If I check it, you'll see the vignette come back. Vignettes are a very effective tool for holding your eye within the frame. And so oftentimes, I will use a vignette whether it's here or in another tool somewhere else in my Photoshop workflow, just so that you hold your eye within the center of the frame to see what you want to see. So that's the first image and just kind of a, a more of an overview image to remind you of some of the tools and capabilities that are, are within Topaz Adjust and uh, how we can you know, very quickly and easily pick a, pick a preset, tweak that preset, and then use transparency to blend back in some of the underlying image to give it maybe some more reality, uh, and then use a vignette in this case to, to darken the edges and hold your eye within the frame. So we'll start with that. And let me get rid of that image. We'll go to the next one. This gentleman was 
sitting in a window um, with these bars each of the three days, and it was I kept being drawn to go back. Just a wonderful gentleman, and the people in Cuba are just tremendous, really, really friendly and uh, welcoming. And so, but this one uh, I worked on today, I actually put it up as a blog post today because I liked it so much. So let's go back to Topaz Adjust. And we're going to go to the, um, where do I want to go? I'm going to go to back to the film collection and we're going to go to the timeless. And I'll just go through a couple of these so you can see what's going on until you get a look that you like. And on this one, I really liked the, the Timeless 4. Let's make that image just a little bit bigger for you there, sorry. The Timeless 4, let's go through those again so we can see those. There's the Retro Style 1, 2, really great looks. I, this particular category of presets that are somewhat new are some of my favorites. But with that, I like to then go over again to this right-hand side and make some adjustments. So we'll go to to the adaptive exposure, just give it a little bit more punch. Uh, and again, just for those who may not know, real quickly, adaptive exposure is like auto adjust on steroids is the way I like to describe it. So rather than just a one click auto adjust button, adaptive exposure in conjunction with regions allows you to adjust the exposure ever so slightly to the amount that you want and then the region says how much of that adaptive exposure is being applied to the image. So if you're way over here to the left, it's, it's applying it to the outer regions, the brighter and dark regions. If I pull this all the way over here to 50, it's going to affect all the regions in that image. And again, why do you choose one versus the other? It's a taste thing. But I tend to be at midpoint down to a th the third quadrant there. And this adaptive exposure rarely goes way up to here because it starts to look very affected and, and so you got to be careful about how far you pull that up. So we would do that and in this particular case I would go down to the details and I dial in a little bit of detail into this scene, maybe even the boost and bring that up a little bit. And then I go down, whoop, let's close this up, go down to the finishing touches again and look at that transparency slider and bring this over just a touch. And notice, notice on this picture that transparency is a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and it's very effective in this particular image, I think. Because over here, with no transparency, it definitely looks like an affected image. Again, if that's what you want, I'm fine with that. Here it is with the underlying image that we started with. But by bringing it over here again, that's, that's totally affected. I like bringing back some of that underlying image. I think it adds a nice touch. So what did we do there? We picked a preset from a list, from the film collection list, the timeless uh, preset. We did a little bit of, of adjusting in our global adjustments, and then went to the finishing touches, used that transparency slider, dragging that across to give us the look that we we're after. Now I'm going to go ahead in this case and accept that and see that back in Photoshop. And then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to create a new layer, which is command or um, command. What is it? Command or option? What is it on a PC? I'm sorry, I'm a Mac guy. Control. Right, control. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Holy! <laughs> oh, I used to be a PC guy. Sorry. I'm going to create a background copy so that we can see what's going to happen here. So let's now go down. So that's one look that we've created. But let's go use black and white effects. Okay, and so we can go, i just got to reference my notes where I want to go to. We can go to traditional, go all the way down, and the one I liked, and again, I need to make that a little bigger. There we go. The one I liked was this particular preset, which is under the traditional effects collection, if you will, and then all the way down on the panel on the presets, warm tone with a white border, and that was what I really liked. Um, but again, in black and white effects, you have the ability, if you don't like the preset that it gives you that border, fine. Come over here and roll down that uh, tab and get rid of the border if that's what you want to do. Um, if you want to dial back on uh, uh, the toning that's happening, you can do that by opening this up and dialing down the tone strength and bringing it back to the black and white. So you have 
really infinite ability to control the look that you have. I'm going to go back because I kind of like the border. And again, we've got a lot of things to get through, so I'm going to leave that there to give you an idea of what that looks like. And and so again, you know, just by way of review, we did the the image in adjust five, and then was able we were able to bring that particular look on into black and white effects, and apply a preset in this case, which looked just great out of the box. So let's go ahead and accept that. And now let's go back here. So if I Go back, that's what we started with. And then in Topaz Adjust with a little bit of thought in our process, and we were able to come up with, again, that old time feel of a photo, which seems to fit for, for Cuba. But then there's another choice. I mean, there's always choices that we can then create a black and white image from that image as well. So hopefully you're getting a feel for the, the power and the flexibility and the creativity that you have within the Topaz set of tools. So. Let's move on. Here's a, I thought I'd add this idea. Why on earth, John, would you bring that ugly picture up? I mean, you know, it's great composition and all that stuff, but it looks really noisy. Well, it is really noisy. And the reason it's noisy is because it's an iPhone photograph in a really, really dark garage that we're able to gain access into. Uh, yes is the answer to the question, did I shoot this with a regular camera? You bet I did. But I thought it would be fun to have an iPhone capture. So the, the point of this exercise is there's a lot of folks out there, I suspect there's a lot of folks in this webinar who have um, iPhones or are shooting with camera phones if, if they are. And they do create some noise, especially if you're in a dark situation. So just want to point out that you can bring those images into Topaz and use some of their tools. Denoise is arguably the best uh, noise reduction. Sorry if I keep going away from the mic, but I gotta look at my keyboard to, to uh, get things to be what I want. So there we go, let's bring it up into this top area here. Pretty noisy and speckly. I did do a, a process on the iPhone to brighten it up and that's what made it look a little goofy here. But I just wanna point out that we can pick some of these presets in this case, we'll pick strong, and you'll see some of that noise going away. And let's go down to the car and see what's happening on there. It's making it pretty smooth, so I think I'm going to back off on one. Let's just go back here. Making that noise go away. It might be a little bit too strong. I'll go back to the strong preset, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. Let's take a look at that in real life here. Come on. There we go. It's going to take a second to do this, but uh, this is something I use quite frequently for uh, iPhone images. If I have a, a good one that I really like, I typically bring it in to denoise first, get rid of that noise, and then do some adjustments on it in my Photoshop, Photoshop workflow, whether that be with Adjust 5 or, or something else. And we can still see some of that grainy, gritty. I'm okay with that. The main thing I wanted to do was clean up that car a little bit. But let's just introduce one other possibility for you. We can go into um, Simplify. And that's the beauty of Topaz. And it's why I, when people ask, what do I get if I'm going to buy Topaz products? Well, with the 30% discount that Nicole offers for webinar attendees, the entire suite just makes a lot of sense for this reason. There's a whole lot of tools that you can use. So I'm going to go just use the biz sum, the top one on the left side. Again, the interface and simplify is the same as what we've been looking at before. You can hit the presets over on the left and then you can tweak them over here. And typically it's a, it has a little bit more saturation than I would like in that preset. So I would bring that saturation back down to what it was which looks a little better. And the simplify size is the main one that does that. It can create some of that uh, the simplified look, if you will. If you don't want it to have quite as much of that simplified look, just bring the simplified size down a little bit, even down to under 20 or so, and you'll see that now it's starting to look pretty nice. So for those out there who are shooting iPhones or camera phones, here's a nice way to um, save those really noisy images when you're taking them in dark situations. Let's stick with uh, this same car that I love so much, and let's go back in. So this is taken with a real camera, and as you can see, the, the noise is, is not there. 
I'm going to move my notes here. And on this one, we're going to show you a, a creative approach with black and white effects to get a, a different kind of a dreamy look that I, I'm kind of drawn to. So let's see if we can't be a little creative on this particular image. I'm going to go into black and white effects. And in this case, again, I'm going to go over to these collections and just by way of review, they give you different looks as you go through these collections. I'm going to go to the to the uh, stylized collection up here to adaptive diffusion with color. I really like that diffused look, but you want some sharpness too, and we're going to go ahead and address that. So adaptive diffusion with color, I think, is a is a great setting. But guess what I'm going to do? Yep, I'm going to come over here to my uh, ability and on, uh, by the way we're in black and white effects and look what we have here we have the adaptive exposure capability within black and white effects which is just awesome and so we can roll that open and here we are with that same adaptive exposure capability and I'm going to go ahead and, and crank that up a little bit in this case because if it's being diffused I needed to bring back in some of the detail there okay so we bring that up a little bit there and then let's go down to the transparency slider. Sorry, when I have to make this a different resolution so that it can be um, recorded properly, and I can't see my, the, the tabs as clearly as I normally can. So we'll go down to this transparency, and notice it's at 50%. And it's at 50% because of the choice that the preset made on the left side. And I want to tweak this. I'm trying to create my own unique look. So I'm going to bring it up to 100% to really bring a lot of that color back that was in the underlying image. Now, remember folks where, we're, where we are right now. We're in black and white effects, but we're using black and white effects to create this kind of dreamy, diffuse, muted color look. So I guess that goes, the point of that is it goes back to you need to understand what these tools do, and the more you play with the tools, then you're going to have the ability to make these effects or create these looks. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Okay, we're not done yet. There's not enough detail in it for me. I could have used the detail sliders from within, adjust, within the adjust tab from within black and white effects, but there's a better way to do it in this particular situation. I'm going to go down to detail two. And the reason this is better is because the adjust, or, or I'm sorry, the detail capability, whether it be in Topaz Adjust 5 or in black and white effects, is going to be like a sledgehammer if you will. And Nicole might not like that. Sorry, Nicole, but it is. It's like a sledgehammer. And it's okay in a number of scenes, and we'll show you one coming up here, but there are some times where you don't want it to be a sledgehammer on the entire image. You want to have more control. And that's the reason Detail 2 was created, was that we would have the ability to adjust the small, medium, or large details, not just everything at one time. So let me just show you by way of, I'm going to overemphasize these sliders right now. I'm going to bring medium up. Kind of remember what that looks like. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to do just the small slider now. Very different, right? Very different. That's affecting the whole image and all of those small details. Let's look at the large details. Completely different again. So the point being, in this case, I can go to the medium and then a little bit of the small, whoops, I'm going a little fast, and let's catch up with me here. And now I've added in, let me do a bit before and after. Here's before, after, and I'm dialing in some, some detail, but I'm leaving that softness behind where I want to. I think I might bring this up a little bit more and bring up the small detail a little bit more. There we go. Now, by way of introduction to this tone tab is tremendous, specifically these red, uh, cyan red, magenta green, yellow, blue. Don't think about them as affecting the color. It's not going to make it more blue or more yellow, more magenta, more green. What it's going to do, as it's saying here as I'm highlighting it, it's going to affect the strength of, of the, the brightness, the level of brightness. The easiest way to do it is to show you. So notice the car, the blues in the car are now getting richer and darker, or they're getting lighter, okay? So it's another tool to allow us to further enhance the look that we're after. And so these are great. 
sliders and I use them frequently to fine tune the look that I'm after. And there we go. So we've taken a color image using black and white effects to create this diffused glow look, if you will. And then we've gone into Topaz Detail 2 to bring out some of the detail, but yet leave that glow behind in the area that we want to. I think that's a tremendous tool. So hopefully that was fun. Let's go on to the next. Where are we here? OK. Man, the bikes down there were just tremendous. There were bike scenes all over the place. It made it really fun. OK, so let's go back into Adjust 5 for the bike. And we're going to go into a different collection this time. We're going to go into the Vibrant collection and introduce you to some of those. Let me look at my notes. Uh, so there's Spiceify, which is really over the top in my mind. There's Dramatic. There's Crisp. But, you know, here's an odd one. Why on earth would you use portrait drama? Because I don't want to have it a big in-your-face look on this particular image. I just wanted it to be somewhat subtle. And, again, I'm going to go over here to the global effects and, and adjust just a little bit in the adaptive exposure. I'm going to go down to the brightness because it feels a little bright for me and darken it up just a little bit. Maybe bring some contrast out of it, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go to the left on the slider and on that. And that feels better to me, the adaptive exposure. I think I might bring that down just a little bit again. I'll show you the before and after. Before, after, it just felt a little bit too affected. And so I'm bringing that adaptive exposure down takes away some of that, makes it a little more natural. And now, just to go back to the local adjustment to, to remind you what happens there. And in this case, I'm going to click on the burn button because I want to darken that sidewalk bring the strength up just a little bit. And now I can start to paint with my brush here along just the sidewalk in the foreground, and it's cumulative. I can let go of the, the mouse button or the, or the uh, Wacom brush, whatever you're doing, and as I paint again, it's going to do it again and darken it double the amount at this point. And I think that looks a lot better, and so there we go. You know, there again within <laughs> Topaz. Or oftentimes we get a little overwhelmed because there's so many uh, uh, choices that we have. Another uh, choice on this image is to to hit the reset all, go back to uh, the, that film collection again. I like so much, and you know, retro one, the retro two works pretty well on this image too, just all by itself to give you that old film look as well. Okay, so let's go on to another thought. I'll look at my time. We're doing fine. Okay, good, because there's a couple of the things that I definitely want to get to. All right, so here we are. Pretty simple uh, image to, to think about as far as processing. Here's one where the entire image is pretty much a grungy, textured, detailed scene. So in this case, we can use that sledgehammer from within uh, Topaz Adjust. And let's just do that. To me, this, is, this type of image screens to be adjusted specifically with one tool from within the Topaz collection. Notice it's got sticky settings, by the way, so it's going to apply the same thing that was there uh, on the last thing we did. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Reset All at the bottom right side and start uh, from here. Let me fit this to the screen. Come on. Okay, well, oh, is it one to one? There. Okay, so now let's go, well, actually in this one I, I hit Reset All, and then I'm not going to use a preset. Uh, quite candidly, that's where I tend to go most of the time. I like to create my own looks. But in this case, Adaptive Exposure is certainly something that we're going to use and bring up the, the nice texture that's going on, bring the regions down a little bit, bring the brightness down just a touch. And then here we can open up the Details tab. And in fact, go ahead and add some of that detail into this image. Let's see how we're doing here. Oops. There we go. And so in a couple quick moves, and that was the point of this particular demonstration of this image, is the speed with which if you learn the tools on the right side that you have the ability to, um, the speed with which you have the ability to do some adjustments. So here it was as simple as going into the adaptive exposure, making a couple of quick adjustments with the key sliders here, 
and then going into the detail tab and giving uh, some detail to the image. And so let's show the before. Before, kind of flat, right? After, we've added in some nice texture and color and detail into that image. Nicole, I thought if I hit that fit, it should fit. Why well, isn't that fitting to the screen? Anyways, okay. We'll move on. I'm sorry, I wasn't. I was answering some questions. Sometimes that fit. Um, That's okay, you're probably answering a ton of emails, aren't you? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> my time. We've <laughs> well, uh, we have about 10 more minutes, if that's enough time, and then about 15 minutes oh, of time, yeah. uh, question and answers after that. Good. That's Perfect. Fine. All right. So, and again, I want to show these, this particular image, and the last one's a fun image, I think, to another creative one. But on this one, I really wanted to have a very simple, um, I didn't want to overdo this at all. So it seemed to me that this was a great one for black and white. Again, it's gone back to that last thing we did in here so we can reset all. I'm going to go down to the Apalita collection. And on this one, I like this hand-tinted chiffon, just to give you an idea. I think that made for a, a nice look. Uh, or you can, on this image, you could go back to the traditional collection and just go with a classic black and white. Um, again, the intent on this image was just to show you the very quickly and easily uh, within the product, you can click on things and get results. And the reason I like to show both the creative techniques that I'm, you know, tweaking sliders with, and then also kind of throw in there images that are quick and easy, is because it, I find that there are different levels of uh, capabilities out there in processing. You might have some people who are brand new to processing images. I tell you what, that, that's part of the beauty, and that's what I strongly suggest to a lot of my students on workshops is to start with Topaz Adjust and black and white in the suite because you can do one-click adjustments, and that's really valuable. And so that's why a couple of these images I'm not going to do a lot other than click on something and show you how quickly you can create a look. And you know, here we are with a cool tone, high contrast, high key. I mean, you can do lots of different things. Um, with all these different presets that are built right in. Okay, that's the main thing I want to talk about on that one. And then the last image is just a blast. These old cars down in these areas were just tremendous. And so I've done a little bit of processing on this image and just couldn't quite get it to be what I wanted. It just felt lackluster and drab. It was exceedingly sunny, and, you know, midday sun, and so it was really difficult. And so I've blended two images in Photoshop, not using HDR here, but blending those two images in Photoshop. And I just couldn't make it work. Though. And then I said, well, I'm just going to go right into to Topaz because I bet I can make everything work just fine. So let's hit Reset All again. And we're going to go over to HDR Collection. And check this out. How's that? One click. And I went, that's a whole lot better. But just let's go through those. You can do heavy pop, and you can add some grunge in if you want to. I think the smooth is a little more realistic. Uh, but this this set gives you that HDR-ish look, that contrasty look. You know, the medium pop grunge is actually pretty good, or the heavy pop smooth. Either of those is fine. I like the smoother look because for me, it doesn't quite have that look of um, uh, of you know in-your-face HDR, which you know I've got honestly tired of a little bit. I mean, there's every once in a while I have to have fun and do that too, but I, I too went through that phase of everything looking that way and kind of backed off. But let's have some fun. Let's go and let's click on the Diffusion tab and let's add some Diffusion. And I'm going to crank that up a little bit actually and some softness. And then I'm also going to click on that Transparency slider where we can bring back some of the original look, just a little bit of it. Uh, and then I'm going to hit OK on this. I'll duplicate that background real, real quick just for fun. And I'm going to do what I've done before. Whoops, go down here to Detail. And here we are again. I'll reset those sliders. And now we'll bring back some of that detail. I'm going to crank that almost all the way up. Notice the road. The road is staying smooth and flat looking, right? But the detail in the car is coming back. That's the whole point of the detail program. 
if I want to add some some of that in the road, notice by doing that, I've brought that back. But I don't want to do so much of that. I want to leave that road a little smooth. I want the, the detail to be in the car so that your eye is drawn to the car. I don't necessarily want you looking at the road. That, that's not the main focus in here. I want you to look at the cars. And so there you go. And, and once again, if you want to tweak with these sliders that I've showed you before, notice the, the great effect that you can have. You can really start to create a whole different looking image by pulling these way to the left or way to the right. It almost changes the whole color of the car because it's changing the brightness of those colors. Here we go again just to show you what's going on with these to play. And left and right on this. Look at that. It's a whole lot different, a whole different looking car. I'm going to go back up to this one because I like what this was doing here. Whoops, to the left on this one is what I like. And there you go, pretty, I think that's a great image to show the, the true capabilities of playing with all these tools that are within these great programs from Topaz. And once you learn what they do, hopefully the one that you learned today was these red, green, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people look at these sliders over here in the tone panel and say, I have no idea what they're doing. But hopefully I've given you a clue and uh, you can start to have some fun with those because I do think it adds a whole new level of, uh, of fun and control to what you're doing there. So there you go. That those, those are the thoughts that I had today with some of the tips and tricks that I use within the, the Topaz suite of products. And again, uh, I can't recommend strongly enough that the whole suite makes sense because I do use denoise regularly. I do use detail. I do use adjust. I do use simplify. Uh, those are the ones that I tend to use on a regular basis and the black and white. I, I forgot to mention black and white and black and white as well. And of course you're probably aware that our good friends are working on new products. They've made announcements so there'll be yet uh, new things that are added to that suite and uh, that'll be fun to look forward to those. So Nicole, I, I'm ready to turn it over for some questions if people have some. Oh yes, we have tons of questions. Okay, Vivian would like to know what the difference is between adjust and detail. Kind of go over that. Um, oh, okay. and, and what uh, she currently owns Adjust, but she's wondering what she might be missing by not having detail. Oh, got it. Okay, between those two programs. Okay, then I've just opened up Adjust. And if you go here and you look at the detail slider, Vivian, you'll notice, I'm sorry, the picture looks a little goofy here, but we don't care what the picture looks like. We're trying to answer your question. <laughs> so, all right, so here, notice, here's the sled. This is the sledgehammer discussion, Vivian. The strength slider here is going to affect the details, and I really should have a different picture up here. I'm sorry, I should go back. It's going to affect all of the details in the entire picture. And then we can enhance the details even more, and we can get these really gaudy looking images. Versus if we go back, and I'm going to get rid of this copy because that was my detail copy. Versus if I go into detail, detail gives me the ability to adjust adjust the details of three different levels of details. Small, I'm over here on the right panel, small, medium, and large. So now instead of affecting all of the details in the image, I'm only affecting the medium details in the image. Okay? Or I'm only affecting the small details in the image. And notice so far by cranking both of those sliders all the way to the right, it doesn't look anything like that gaudy look I was getting in Adjust. If I bring this all the way over here. Now if I bring all three of these sliders, now it looks like that image from within in uh, Adjust. However, I will let you know it really doesn't. This looks even better in here. So if you're looking for that over-the-top grungy look like we have on the screen right now, you're not going to get that with the detail slider and, and the, the detail boost in adjust. You're only going to get it here in detail. So I, I guess maybe maybe a different way to put it, Vivian, is adjust. I guess the best way I could do is that whole old sledgehammer analogy. It, it is really going after everything in adjust, and it's a pretty aggressive adjustment. Here, it's giving you the ability to fine tune the level of detail that you want to bring in into the small, the medium, or the the large detail. So it gives you much more control in adjusting the detail within the image. Hopefully that helped. Yes, I think better, better it does. picture here for the future. So let me get rid of this one. <laughs> okay. 
um, while you're kind of explaining the programs like you just did with detail, we had quite a few people when you were in Adjust ask about the regions. Any way you could go into that just a little bit, sure. how the regions Absolutely. works? Yeah, let's just open up something simple here. Okay, because that's the magic. See, and I, and I guess I shouldn't assume that, you know, I should skip over these things. I, I, sometimes I worry that people tire of me going over, but I'm glad the question was asked because to me this is, this is the most powerful part of this program. Over here in the Global Adjustments, the Adaptive Exposure. Let's do this a little bit more succinctly this time. The Adaptive Exposure and the Regions work hand in hand. You should think of them as one, one adjustment that you need to use both of them. And what happens is the Adaptive Exposure says, I'm going to pull this region way over here. The Adaptive Exposure is that auto-adjust on steroids, if you will. So it is it is adjusting the image a little bit as I'm over here, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and all the way. Okay, so that's what that does. But it's working in harmony with regions. And again, the region slider says if it's way over to the left like it is here, it's only going to affect the outside tonalities, so the lightest and the darkest tonalities. The more I move this, I'm going to move this up to 50%. The more I move the slider over, it's adjusting more of the tonalities. So now it's adjusting 50% of the tonalities in the image. If I slide it further to the right, and the more and more to the right, it's affecting all of the tonalities in the image. So the value of adaptive exposures and regions working together is you have infinite control over the adjustment of the tonalities in that image between those two things. So let's maybe do a demonstration. I'm going to bring these all the way down. I'm going to bring my regions a third of the way up. So it's only affecting roughly a third of the tonalities from the darkest to the lightest, and then some of those in between. And I can bring this over, and you'll see what's affecting. As the more I pump this up, the, auto, the adaptive exposure, you'll see what happens. Okay, let's do that same thing, but I'm going to go over here. I'm going to move the regions all the way to the right. So now, whatever adaptive exposure adjustment I make, it's going to affect all of those. So now let's do it again. Completely different look until we get that really grungy look if you want to. I'll leave it on the really grungy look, and I'll bring the regions down. See what happens? It goes away. It's not affecting as many. It's affecting more of those uh, of the tonalities throughout the image. So hopefully that helps. Adaptive exposure is auto-adjust on steroids. Regions is how many of the tonalities in that image are being affected by the adaptive exposure adjustment. Awesome, thank you. I'll let Nicole stop typing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that you can Keep hear typing. that. <laughs> um, also, I want to ask about your equipment that you use during your Cuba shoot. Many people are wondering about the camera and lens combo that you were using for these. Well, it's a good question, and I would be I would use a different, a slightly different uh, kit next time. Uh, really, what I used primarily was my Canon 5D with a 1740 lens and then I had a straight 85 because I knew I would be doing a lot of street and people type photographs and I did bring a 70 to 200 lens I used it once I don't think I'd bring it but the secret weapon I brought is my favorite new camera and that's the Fuji uh, X100 it's a phenomenal camera it's a dedicated fixed lens I hate to call it a point and shoot because it's a $1200 camera it's hardly a point and shoot <laughs> Uh, but it's a APS-C size sensor with a dedicated 23 millimeter lens. That's an effective 35 millimeter lens because of the APS-C crop size. And the image quality is nothing short of astounding. The noise is uh, is being uh, compared to the the noise that you get out of a Nikon D3S, believe it or not. And the sharpness you would expect to be very sharp because it is a dedicated a fixed focal length prime uh, attached to a sensor that's perfectly married to it. So you're not dealing with um, any distance from sensor issues that might be softening the issue. And so that, I shot most of my keepers, honestly, 70% came from uh, the Fuji camera, and it was, a, it was a blast to have there. And I think that's, that should cover the equipment, I hope. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Kind of moving on towards a little bit back to your workflow, Michael mm -hmm. has a question. Um, 
but before I ask that question, I just want everybody to know that I will send out a workflow PDF chart that kind of goes over the um, preferred Topaz workflow as far as it goes to from all of the 10 programs that are in the Topaz bundle. I will send a link um, out because a lot of people are asking if I have <laughs> some sort of chart that I can send them. So I'll make sure to include that in the follow-up email. But as far as your personal workflow, Michael would like to know if there's a rule of thumb for you for the extent of adjustments that you make in Lightroom before you edit and adjust. Um, you know, do you do your contrast and detail adjustments and adjust after contrast and clarity adjustments in Lightroom? Or should you leave it until you're in adjust or do both or et cetera, et Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not a Lightroom user. Oh, no, I can hear the groans. Out there. <laughs> and I have a good friend, uh, Bob Towery, who is uh, he's an evangelist for Lightroom. And he's probably right because he's a lot smarter about that stuff than I am. <laughs> I, I'm just what you call old and stuck in the mud. So I'm a bridge user. Uh, in Photoshop, in Aperture once in a while for certain things, but I'm just so locked into my habits that they're hard to break. Uh, Bob will probably get me to use uh, Lightroom here one of these days. But nonetheless, I mean, the theory of what he's asking still applies. So yes, what I do is when I'm in the, the, the raw converter, or I guess you call it the develop tab in Lightroom, they're the same. It's the same engine. It's the same thing. So I can answer the question. Um, yes, I set my black point, and I do minor adjustments. Mainly, I'm working on setting a black point and setting my white balance from within the raw converter or the develop module, whether it be in Aperture or in Lightroom. And then. And to me, the most important part of your developing of that raw file is to present to Photoshop or present to Adjust or whatever plugin you're using a great file. And so, quite candidly, when I'm I don't really look at the picture that much. I look at the histogram in the in the panel that uh, where the raw processing is taking place. And I want to make sure that I'm not clipping the blacks and I'm not clipping the, the highlights and that I have my colors right, meaning my white balance correct, and that I've set a pretty good black point. I don't use the um, clarity a whole lot because I want to do a lot of that from within, uh, from within Photoshop uh, in, in some of the things that I prefer to do there. Uh, but that doesn't say that I won't. For instance, there are certain images that require very, very little bit of processing, and a lot of Cuba images are that way, especially the people pictures. Unless you're looking for an affected look, uh, a lot of the people pictures, specifically out of that Fuji camera, I, I, I did everything right from within the raw processor, and it was done with the exception of some final sharpening, and that was it. So hopefully that helped. I forgot the name of the person. I apologize. Oh, Michael. That Michael. Was Michael. Yes. Oh, that helped Michael. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Jim has a question, and he's going to put you on the spot, and I'm going to uh -oh. ask it. <laughs> What's your right, personal thanks. favorite program and why? If, of Topaz. Well, of course of Topaz. Of Topaz. <laughs> <laughs> personal, that's really hard because that, that, that used to be a really easy answer, and it would be a just five. Um, but with the black and white program that's come out, Man, it's really good. It really is. So, am I allowed to have uh, you know speaker privileges and say adjust five and black and white effects? <laughs> Combine the two. <laughs> but I got to give a what? Well, adjust because I really it is the go-to program because of its simplicity and its ease. The presets are great, and the ability to create your own looks on the right side of the panel is really great. And it it's a it's a it's a one-stop shop program that you can really get great looking images quickly and easily and intuitively. And it's the same thing for black and white effects. I mean, if you're a black and white shooter or you're drawn to that look, uh, monochromatic images, black and white effects, same thing. It, it gives you really quick, easy access to great looks that can be tweaked and modified and adjusted. And so those two are the go-to programs. 
All right. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me. And thank you, John. This was awesome. I had so much good feedback during your presentation. Great. Always, always enjoy doing these and look forward to the next one. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.